Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to a whole new episode of Full Steam Ahead. I am your host, Zoe, with my co-host over there, Angel. Yo, yo, yo. This is a terrific Thursday. Friday Jr. is here. The Astros finished the homestand three and four. We tied the series against the White Sox. And, you know, unfortunately, we lost the series against the Tigers, which I would have thought we would have done. Unexpected. It's very unexpected. We were undefeated against them last year in the 22 season. But, hey. It's baseball. Not everything is going to go your way. Uh, their, their pitching did pretty good. Hitters, I mean, they hit the ball pretty damn well. Spencer Torkelson's one of them that, I mean, he he ambushed the ball. Matt Veerling as well from, you know, the best call from Joe Davis. You know, Veerling's back. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure you've heard that call. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, he, he had a good performance in this series as well. But, like I said, Astros lose the series. Moved to three and four in the season. And we'll be heading to the Twin Cities to take on Carlos Correa and Christian Vasquez on Friday. Not not today, Thursday, Friday. They moved the game because of weather issues. Uh, shout out to the weather over there in Minnesota yeah. because our bullpen really needs it. And right. the Astros pitchers. Yeah, I feel like that really benefited the Astros for sure to give those guys a break, especially the bullpen arms. Yeah, I mean, they had the Metro Dome back then, but now they got Target Field over there, which I've heard it's it's one of the most prettiest fields in baseball. But, of course, you know, we're going to start off with Astros Roundup. We'll, we'll kick it off with Around the League later on. But before we get started, we had to make a poll. We had to make a poll and tell all our baseball fans, Astros fans out there, you know, hey, is it too early to hit the panic button? You know, is it one of them days that, hey, the Astros are already off to a rocky start or we're going to have to kind of, Hit the button already. And majority of y'all said no. I mean, I, I'm not surprised. 120 votes, 59% said no. I 33% agree. said not yet. And 8% said yes. The 8%, like Mario had said, one of our good friends that listens to the show, show yourself. But <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, to me, it's nothing to really panic about. It's too early in the season. We are a slow team. As it's been well. a tradition. Yeah. It, yes. It, you know, those Aggies out there, if you do it twice, it becomes a, tra- a tradition. And it's been happening a few times. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a very slow start that the Astros do in the month of April. And you can even include May as well. The Astros are a second half, well, mm-hmm. mid to second half team that get hot in that time of the, of the summertime, really, going into the fall. And we all know how the fall is for us. But real quick, in 2021, you know, in the month of April, they were 13 and 12. Astros in 2022 was 14 and 11. Right now, as it stands from seven games this April, the Astros are three and four, which could possibly go out to be looking like around that record or maybe a losing record for the first time I've ever seen since a good while. I think 2019, they still had a winning record. 2020, I'm really not going to count it because we're playing in the summertime uh, due to COVID. But Give me your one word to describe this series, though. I mean, the Astros look pretty good. You know, hitting-wise, pitching-wise, a little shaky. I mean, just tell me your one word. I would say underwhelming would be my one word. I don't think we should have lost that series against the Tigers, but, I mean, it's baseball. Like uh, Our right-handed hitters, besides yesterday's game, have really been struggling. Like In the first six games, only – Tucker and Alvarez were like leading that offense. It was our lefty hitters doing all the work. And I, I mean, Abreu was good, but Bregman was struggling before like the last two games. Pena was struggling, and we'll get into that in a bit. Like the rookies are still trying to find their groove in the major leagues. And I feel like it's just that's been going on for our offense. The bullpen's been kind of tired as well. So it's been showing in these past few games. So underwhelming, but. I mean, it's just it's a long stretching season. Yeah, like I said, it's underwhelming that these guys are starting off three and four. We, you know, you put this team on paper, and it's one of the best teams in Major League Baseball. I think but... we were ranked uh, preseason uh, ranked number one, you know, and now <laughs> at least I, top three. Yeah, I top three. And I, I think I saw one of those uh, MLB polls, and we're not even a top ten. But I feel like they always under undervalue us in the beginning, anyway. So I think we'll. That will change. I, that don't have a problem. I mean, yeah. that doesn't really affect us how this team is going to be playing. We all know who the Astros are, and everybody knows too. The two biggest bats in their lineup is not 
you know, on there because of their injuries. Michael yeah. Bradley's still um, trying to get back into shape. And then Jose Altuve, obviously, with that fractured thumb. But I'm not going to be tripping about it. Underwhelming is a good word to say because you look at the Tigers from that last series against Tampa Bay, and they weren't hitting the ball at all. Pitching they got, looked awful. They got smoked out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it looked bad. I mean, you thought this would be another sweep for the Astros. I feel like we made Riley Green look like a Hall of Famer. And <laughs> like he was killing us. Matthew Boyd, too. I mean, Matthew Boyd was carving us. I mean, went through, I think, the first four innings or the first five innings until the Astros kind of, you know, catching along to him. And then same thing as Matt Manning. Matt Manning's first outing against the Astros, I mean, I think he went five and two-thirds, only giving up yeah. uh, one or two earned runs. I mean, he looked solid as well. So Speaking of the Mets, Matt Verling, too. I feel like he had a little redemption games. Oh, man, dude. I mean, he, like I said, I'm, I'm glad that mm-hmm. we're not seeing him anymore. Uh, well, we won't see him until a good while. We're going to be playing in Detroit. I'm not sure when, but we will play them one more time. Same thing as uh, Spencer Torkelson. I mean, the big, the first two games, oh, yeah. he was just crushing the ball. I mean, left and right, that big home run, too, in the second game, it, it was bad. But, you know, hey, let's already start on, Ash- on Astros Roundup, and we're going to go through our pros and cons of this series. Bregman. I'm glad he found his swing. His yeah. first game back, three for five, uh, kind of slowed up a little bit, but hadn't hit the ball pretty hard them last two games. He finished the series four for 13 with one walk, and his batting average went up to 308. So uh, that is a positive sign to see from the Astros, uh, especially Alex Bregman getting back in the groove of things. Yeah, we actually interviewed him um, for the post game, and he said that he, he, he felt like he found his timing. And which is a good sign because I feel like he was rocketing the ball. It's just like he was hitting to bad luck, but he feels good. And if he feels good, we feel good, I feel like. Yeah, like you said, I mean, it was his timing that wasn't right. He got his timing down. He looked fine these next two games. I mean, it it was unfortunate. We almost had a breaking bomb in the Crawford box. Yeah, I saw that. But it it just didn't happen. Um, Yeah, it was funny, too. When he was rounding first, he thought it was gone. And he, you know, he just went ahead and went on to second. But. I mean, it happens. It's baseball. He got thrown out at second as well. My next pro, the Astros middle of the lineup. I'm telling you, that that is one of the best three, four, fives in an in an MLB like lineup. I, I would say two with the Braves and with the Cardinals as well. But Alvarez, Abreu, Tucker. Oh my gosh! I mean, these guys did pretty damn well this series. Uh, combined from them guys, 11 for 35, 314 batting average, two doubles, three home runs, 10 RBIs, two walks. And l- let's say this right now. The Astros scored a total of 17 runs this series. You know, majority of the runs came off of them bats from Abreu, Alvarez, and Tucker. So that is a big part of your lineup. And I'm glad, you know, Jordan Alvarez is back because if Alvarez wasn't going to get his timing ready from that spring training, he only had one week to get ready. If he wasn't ready... We could be looking at maybe a one in yeah. one in six start right now. So, I can see that. so I mean, it's good. It's a positive thing. Alvarez right now is on a six game hitting streak as well. Same as Abreu, he's up with seven games. He has a, I think he has a batting average over three hundred as well. The human uh, connection right there. Yes, Los Cubanos Hermanos. I mean, they're doing really damn good in that three and four spot. So, very excited to see Abreu in a Nationals uniform. No, no, no. Yuli stands out there. We still love. La Pena, but I mean, when you get a bat like this, I mean, it just upgrades this lineup and it shows right there on the stats. Last but not least, Jordan Alvarez hitting number 100, number 100 career home runs. He is the eighth Cuban to hit 100 home runs. And Angel was telling me this off air that Rafi, it would have been nine because Rafael Palmero had hit 100 career home runs twice. One with the Baltimore Orioles and one with the Texas Rangers, which I don't, you know, we were talking about that. That don't count. I don't think, I don't think that doesn't count because it's, I mean, come on, it's career wise. I'm not going to count two career 100 home runs. So Alvarez becomes the eighth Cuban to hit over a hundred. He is the fastest Astros to reach a hundred home runs as well. Well, it's the eighth Cuban to hit a hundred home runs with one team. Okay. Well, yeah, Yeah, You, you know what I mean? Yeah. Anyway, Fastest Astros player to hit over, not over, reach 100 home runs at 372 games. Berkman held that record with 452. That, that's a big difference yeah, in game-wise. Difference. So, that's how good Jordan is. Like, um, I feel like his home well, his home run was a towering opposite field bounce to the, like, to the gas pump. 
like I feel from that point in, you knew that guy was special. Oh, he was special as soon as we got him, you know. Shout out to Josh Fields and the Los Angeles Dodgers organization over there in LA without having and we're I was talking to you this on the other day that the Dodgers had O'Neill Cruz, which is the shortstop for the Pittsburgh Pirates, who we're gonna see after the twin series, and Jordan Alvarez. Okay. And they gave up I think they gave up Tony Watson. You know, from Pittsburgh, they got they brought him over here to LA, and they gave up O'Neill Cruz, and then for us, it was it was Josh Fields. So, you know, hey, salute to you, Josh. Salute to you, Tony Watson. I feel like we need to do more trades with the Dodgers. <laughs> no, I don't think that's ever gonna happen ever <laughs> again. It's gonna happen for. I don't think that will happen for a good while. But he joins another good elite club in MLB history. Alvarez becomes the fifth player to be the fastest to reach 100 home runs. And he is the fifth, like I said. First is Ryan Howard, 322. P. Alonso's with 347. Gary Sanchez, 355. And then Aaron Judge is with 371. So uh, Alvarez just missed Aaron Judge with, you know, it, it would be cool to be in front of him. He just missed it. But, hey, I mean, he's still up there with a bunch of greats. I mean, Ryan Howard was one of the best left-handed hitters you know, we already know about Big Me Pete Alonzo over there in New York. Gary Sanchez, I'm he's kind of fall off the wagon a little. He's he's trying to get the get in the back of group thing. He he looks good though. I mean, have you seen him? His physique, it looks he looks more lean. He looks more, you know, he quicker, I would say. But he, he doesn't have an MLB team right now currently. And then Aaron Judge obviously had the MVP season last year. So and then a bonus for one of the pros I wanted to mention. The Astros had over nine hits in each game. Um, Monday's contest, they had nine. Second game, they had 10. And on the last game, which was yesterday, they had 11 hits as a team. So, I mean, it's it's very positive to see that, that the guys are still hitting. It just would be very beneficial if they would do it with runners on and in good situations instead of playing in the mid to the end of the game. You know, hey, let's start off hot and continue on throughout the rest of the game. Yeah, I feel like situational hitting has been a real big issue for the Astros. Like, they're, they're struggling, especially with runners in scoring position. Like, for example, Monday, they were 3 for 14 with 12 left on base. Like, that's a lot of – that's, that's a big number right there for sure. Yeah. On Tuesday, no different. One for three with seven runners left on base. And then Wednesday, one for six with runners in scoring position and six left on base. Luckily, we had some huge home runs, and we won that game on Wednesday. But mm-hmm. – I don't feel that's a winning recipe for sure because the long ball might not happen, you know, quite often as it did yesterday. So that is something they're struggling on, situational hitting. But I feel like once the big guys, or like the big guns of Altuve and Bradley come back, that number should be better where we want to see it. Um, not just that offense, but also the bullpen has been struggling as well. And again, I just feel like it's they're doing too much so early on in the season. Like the Astros didn't stretch out their uh, their stars in spring training, so now they can't stretch them out in the first game back. So it, they just have to throw more innings. And like right now, our Astros bullpen ranks seventh, seventeenth in Major League with a four point two six ERA. That's that's not good compared to where we were at last yeah. year. Like last year we were number one, so that's a huge difference. Yeah, uh, it's a huge difference, big time. Uh, I think the Twins. And the Rangers, I think they're both at the top two of the list in the bullpen. So, and not not you don't want to see your rival up there as yeah. the Rangers being one of the top teams in bullpen and you know even pitching wise because last year I mean they they were terrible at pitching, but obviously this offseason they upgraded their pitching staff with a good coach and Bruce Bochy. Yeah, I feel like the Rangers and the Angels are one of those teams where if we just got if we just like eliminate the starter out the game you had a good chance to win in that game. So you say they're one and two now, so they definitely improved. Um, Astros are allowing the seventh most runs, 12. And then Astros ranked third in MLB with 28 strikeouts. So strikeout numbers are good. And I feel like that's a good contribution between Abreu, Renault Blanco, and um, I would even say, um, not Presley, was it? Um, hang on, I lost my train of thought. Who was it? Uh, I was I was saying Montero, I think. Was like, I mean, like they all have good stuff, so they are like those strikeouts come in huge. And the Astros bullpen this series were 
and a third innings pitch, nine hits, six earned runs, three walks, and 13 strikeouts. Um, they're allowing three home runs. Uh, Brady and Aris and Stanek all allowed one. And then I feel like Phil Maton and Renault Blanco are the only players that have not – I'm sorry, I don't feel like – they are the only players that have not allowed a run this season. So, I mean, kind of mixed issues. Like I feel like, like you said, Renault, Bron- uh, Renault Blanco and Phil Maton have been doing their, their end of the bargain, but – the rest are kind of struggling a little bit. And again, it's still early on. Arms are still getting loose. Yeah, Ronel Blanco. I mean, God bless. This guy's a stud, dude. Four, six of his outs, four of them are strikeouts. That's how good this guy is. He has some good stuff. Uh, Phil Maton hasn't been out in big situations. Uh, I believe he came in for Valdez and a bases loaded jam. Where it was somebody else. Oh, Hunter Brown. Let me take that back. Hunter Brown. Hunter Brown left the bases uh, loaded, and Dusty went out with Phil Maton. The first batter he brought in – I mean, the first batter he faced, sorry about that, was a four-pitch walk. And obviously that's not going to be taxed on him. It'll be on Hunter Brown. But at the same time, too, it could have been on him. But, I mean, yeah, I mean, everybody's allowed at least one earned run. Phil Maton, like you said, Renel Blanco are the only ones that haven't. Renel Blanco, I believe right now, is the only – bullpen piece that's probably your best one in that bullpen right now uh stanick look a little shaky with his accuracy ryan presley's finding the groove of things after you know he was under the weather that they said same thing as rafael montero hector neris unfortunately gave up that home run in the first game of the series so i mean these guys just need a day rest they were taxed they've been the bullpen has been taxed a bunch of times i mean the first I mean, the first seven games, I mean, the bullpen has been getting hit a lot. They've been getting, you know, they had to bring them out a lot of times too as well. So a well-needed rest day today on Thursday. And then obviously they got to get back into it uh, against the Twins, which the Twins are a really hot team right now. We'll talk about them a little bit later. But yeah, it wasn't the best this series, but I, I'm not hitting the panic button on them guys. They're, they've They've been there. They've done that, so. I'm very excited to see for the next series. Definitely. And then another contribution for the struggles is that our table setter, Jeremy Pena, is kind of struggling a little bit. He started off pretty good in his first three games. He was batting 364. Um, he went 4 for 11 with a double and RBI and only three strikeouts. Like, I feel like at that point, the first three games, you're like, okay, I think Jeremy Pena has set, his, like, has set himself forward to being the leadoff hitter. Uh, the leadoff hitter. But yeah. recently, I feel, uh, the last four games, he was 3 for 20. One home run, three RBIs, two walks, and three strikeouts. Hopefully, yesterday's game was a step in the right direction. He did play pretty good, but previously he was struggling. He kept whiffing on that slider way still, and I, I feel like he was just trying to do too much. Like he, I feel like he sensed the steam, like the team struggling, so he's just trying to do too much as that leadoff guy. Because like your job is to get on base, and, mm-hmm. you, and you try to get it on base. At, every way you can, either by swinging at a bad pitch, trying to put it the other way. Like, I feel like he's just trying to do too much on that. Um, and there's been some talk. Do you think we should switch Pena or Bregman? Like, I feel like I've been seeing around in Twitter that they should put Bregman in the leadoff spot, but what are you thinking? I like Bregman. I, I think it's, you know, I love Pena, but I think Bregman has, he has one of the best, better eyes in baseball. I know for this Astro lineup as well, he has one of the best size. I mean, Pena and the two hole looked really good too. So I wouldn't oppose the move from putting Bregman in the leadoff role and then putting uh, Pena in that two hole. Maybe Pena is just comfortable being in the second spot. You know, he, he did that for a while since Michael Brantley was out. Uh, I think it'd be a good option. I would think, you know, for both sides, I think Pena needs it. You know, because he'll have Jordan Alvarez behind him, so he has that comfort. And then Bregman is, you know, he's finally getting that swing into groove again. He's hitting the ball hard. Maybe being the leadoff hitter, he could draw a lot more walks, and the on-base percentage is just going to go up. You already know OBP is going to just rise because of the best, you know, the great discipline that he has. I mean, I can see it happening, but I don't think Dusty's – I feel like Dusty likes speed on top, and I feel like that would give him it. In order to have speed, you got to get on base. No, I so. and I 100 percent agree, <laughs> and I 100 percent agree with you. But I feel like he just loves Bregman in that uh, second spot because if Pena gets on, Bregman is a great opposite field hitter, and you can maybe bring that first to third, and you and you set up you 
Jordan, Jordan with a runner on third and first, possibly, or even two runners on scoring positions. I feel like that's his battle that he's facing. Yeah, we, we could see that happening. You never know if, Pe- you know, Pena was struggling, like you said, three for 20 in the last four games. If that continues to happen, I mean, Dusty's going to have to make a move quick. And I well, What think- about Chaz? I like Chaz where he's at. I okay. like where he's at. I don't think he needs to be moved up or I don't think he needs to be at the top of the word. That doesn't make no sense for me to have because if Tucker gets on, I feel comfortable putting Chaz right there in that spot to try to bring Tucker in at least rather than having, you know, Corey Jokes or Yanir Diaz yeah. or Mauricio Dubon, one of them guys. I, I'd rather have Chaz McCormick stay where he's at. So Yeah, I feel like he gives a life to that bottom of the order for sure. Yeah, so I, I think Chazzy, you know, Chazzy Fizz is good where he's at. It's just right there in the one-two hole. I could possibly see a switch in the future if Pena continues to struggle on that top of the leadoff spot because we, we've seen that too happen last year, that he was struggling a little at the leadoff since Altuve was hurt, and then they had to you know, put in new numerous guys in the leadoff spot. But, I mean, Bregman's no, you know, nothing new to him being in the leadoff from 2019. Bregman had, I mean, in a playoff game, he was in as in the leadoff hitter because A.J. Hinch had put him there. So, I mean... If you know, hopefully Pena does find it because the last two at bats he got a double and he had a home run. You know that that could change a lot, and you know the swing of things for him. So uh, hopefully Pena gets you know his act together basically. So that is it for our recap of the pros and cons. Now we're gonna move on to the preview, and like I said, I mentioned before, we're gonna go see our buddies over there in the Twin Cities of Minneapolis with Carlos Correa and Christian Vasquez being there. Twins are a good team. They're, they're, there's nothing to hide about that team. They are really good. They're very underrated, I say. You had them winning the, the division. Yes, I have them winning the Central. I think they're – I mean, they're pitching, adding Pablo Lopez. I think that was a good move for them. They still got, you know, hitting if Byron Buxton could stay healthy, especially. I mean, they're probably going to be one of the top teams, but – Let's preview that start, and we're going to start off for Friday at 310. This is the Twins' home opener, so that's why it's a 310 start time uh, central in Houston. Jose Arquiti will be on the mound for the Astros with a 675 ERA, and Sonny Gray, 1-0 and with the 0 ERA. So he's oh, wow. looked fantastic. He hasn't changed nothing. But our banner, Kitty, on the other hand, has last out in against the White Sox. No decision. Only pitched four innings, seven hits, three earned runs, one walk, and five strikeouts. He did see a new pitch. If you were at the Astros game or even, you know, watching it on TV, it wasn't showing what pitch he was throwing. He has a fastball, a changeup. I think he just added a sinker to a curveball. And now the new pitch is called a sweeper. It is a sweeper. As the new pitch, I mean, like I was saying, if he's where at Minute Maid Park, there was nothing showing whenever he had pitched that ball. But now they have called it on Baseball Savant. And even the Astros had said, too, and, and Arkady had said it was a sweeper. So that's the new pitch nowadays. I think Shohei Otani has thrown it, too, as well. So uh, that's good to know. You know, something you learn something new every day. But Sonny Gray, on the other hand, I mean, my God, this guy has looked fantastic in one start. Uh, against the Kansas City Royals, obviously that doesn't sound like a good team, but hey, it's KC. They're still, you know, they have a bright future with the young guys they have over there. Five innings pitch, three hits, no earned runs, four walks, and one strikeout. So when you look at that stat, it looked like the Royals were basically just, you know, taking pitches, relaxing at the plate, being able to let the ball travel, you know, let it come to them to, you know, slow the game down. Pena needs to do that if he's going to be the leadoff hitter. He needs to slow it down. Bregman, as you already know, he has a good eye. But the other thing I wanted to mention was we haven't seen Sonny Gray face the Astros since April 2018 when he was a New York Yankee, and he took an L in that game as well. Of course, of course. When you wear the Yankee uniform, you take L's. <laughs> so, I, I mean, that's a, what, a five-year span, 2018, or four or five-year span right there that we haven't seen him. But – The Astros, at least Bregman, I would say, Bregman, Altuve, um, really really them two guys in that lineup have seen him a lot more out of anybody because of his days when he played with the Oakland Athletics. He, you know, if you don't remember, he was one, he was the, he was an ace out there. He was one of the best players in that starting rotation staff for the A's. So 
Astros just got to be patient if, you know, obviously we saw four walks. Be patient at the plate and just let him come to you. I don't know if you have anything to add with seeing that four walk rate and then just having one strikeout too. So, yeah, well, Sonny Gray was, like you said, was an up and coming prospect. Like he had pretty good stuff and then just was derailed by injuries. He had a really good uh, year last year with the Reds, I believe, and he got that paycheck for the Twins. So, I mean, it just depends which Sonny, uh, Sonny Gray we'll see. We'll see Sonny Gray of old or recent Sonny Gray. And if it's, Recent Sunday, I think we have a good chance of lighting up the Twins like we usually do. Like I don't even remember that game where we're like down and in the eighth and eighth inning we score like yeah we that was like, run. that was the wild card in 2020. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, I remember that. Um, I think Correa was the one that saved us too from that game. So, you know, Carlos Correa is already over there in Minneapolis, going to be with um, the Twins for the rest of his career. So, moving for Friday's game, we're going to go Saturday, and that's a 110 start time. You got Luis Garcia, that is 0 and 1 with a 540 ERA, versus Joe Ryan, his second year in the big leagues with a 10150 ERA. And we, we've seen Joe Ryan last year uh, as he pitched against Houston, four innings pitch, four hits, four earned runs, five walks, three strikeouts. Uh, the biggest names out of that game was Jeremy Pena and Alex Bregman. Pena went one for three with two RBIs and two walks. Alex Bregman two for three, two RBIs, one walk. So that Great is a positive. That. Yeah, you, that's a positive sign to see, especially for me with seeing Pena having drawing two walks against you know Joe Ryan. I think that's a positive. You know, you take that as a positive into this series that he already have two hits coming out of the game uh, from yesterday. And now he's going to be going to Minneapolis. He just has to be patient. That's the only thing he needs to do. And I know you're a leadoff hitter. You got to try to figure out, you know, how to get on a bunt, a uh, loop over first base, something. But you cannot just reach and swing and miss every time at that slider, which I, I believe Joe Ryan does have a slider. He's a pretty good one, too. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he's going to throw that each and every time against Jerry Pena. Yeah, hopefully they can continue their success against Joe Ryan. Like you said, Pena and Bregman, those are our table says right there. That's, that's you know, you love to see that for Alvarez and Abreu and Tucker. Like, there's, hopefully they give them those opportunities to get us more runs and, you know, be the RBI guys they are. Yeah, hopefully they do because, we're like, like I said in the beginning, I mean, that three through five spot is very crucial for this offense. Without them guys, I don't think we're scoring any a lot. You know, we're not going to score a lot of runs. Uh, Pena has been struggling this past series, and then Bregman too is just like barely finding the groove of things. But anyway, we got Luis Garcia on the mound for that day. His last out wasn't the best five innings, seven hits, three earned runs, two walks, four strikeouts. We got to see Garcia from the Venezuela. We got to see that oh, guy. Yeah. We got to because we're, we're down pitching right now because of Lance McCullers Jr. not being on the roster. Hunter Brown's barely coming back from that uh back tightness, which we'll talk about his outing in a minute. And then, you know, the rest of the guys, Framber Valdez looked pretty good. Christian Javier finally got back into the thing. So hopefully, you know, the second start of these Astros players, they, they start finding their groove again. I'm pretty sure the pitch count two is going to ramp up. We saw Framber throw over 100 pitches. Uh, Javier was close to 100 pitches. So I'm pretty sure we'll see these guys again, the pitch count more, uh, you know, increased. I wonder what beats he'll be wearing because for Venezuela, he wrote the Venezuelan, uh, Venezuelan uh, flag beats. And then for his start, he wore the golden beads. I wonder which one will be now. Uh, he'll probably have to change it to regular navy blue and orange. I don't know. Something something get, get creative. Get, I mean, throw throw something out there. But Sunday, that is the last game of this series. You got Hunter Brown, which I didn't told have, you. Yeah, I did. told you. Like, he was going to start off slow. And then he's going to get it catch up in the middle of the year. So you think he's going to start off slow and then get better throughout the year? I think so. Okay, you heard it here, folks. He heard Angel just said that. He said he's going to get ready in basically half the season. So, <laughs> um, But anyway, he had a 771 ERA, the no decision. He was going against Tyler Mowley, 1-0 with a 180 ERA. And we've only seen him once, and that was his days back with the Reds. And I think we did pretty fair, but seven innings pitch, four hits, two earned runs, one walk, seven strikeouts. And that was in 2019. Remember, we had a probably the best 
best lineup in Nationals franchise history don't in 2019. Yeah, don't we're not going to talk about that. But his last outing against Miami, five innings, five hits, one earned run, one walk, seven strikeouts. So you can see the K rate is pretty high. If he's thrown seven strikeouts in 2019 against Houston, and then his first and only outing in 2023 with seven strikeouts, I'm he's going to have a lot of swing and misses. These guys got to jump on it quickly instead of, I would say, not taking a lot of pitches, but being able to be protected with two strikes, having better play discipline, be able to put the ball in play. I think that's going to be the most key. And then Hunter Brown, like I said, four, four and two thirds, six hits, four and runs, three walks, five strikeouts. He said he felt good. It just was one of them days that it's baseball. It happens. Um, the Tigers were just the better team in that game. You just got to tip your cap, and hopefully Hunter Brown does come out of this game as the winner. I hope so. But it'll be a tough match- matchup for sure because the Twins have a hot hitter right now, and it's Trevor Larnick. I think Zell picked him up in our fantasy league that we have. So I did. I did. I did. Now, that was just recently because <laughs> I just I just found out he's probably the hardest hitter right now in the Twins uh, lineup. Yeah, so he beat me to the punch for sure. But I, I knew I mean, that was going to happen. I knew yeah. that was going to happen too. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> he had to pull the trigger on that one. So he's been batting 391, um, has a 481 on base percentage and a 601 uh, slugging. He has one home run, six RBIs, and four walks. So hopefully the Astros pitching can cool him down a little bit, give Lorenzo some negative points on, on his fan on his fantasy league. No, we don't need that. We don't <laughs> need that. I'm already losing already. <laughs> oh, yeah. You, you're, you're truly won last year, and I mean, I'm winning by a mile right now. So. By the fucking waiver wire. I mean, everybody here had like 500 plus waiver claims. Hey, <laughs> hey, whatever it takes. But speaking of, you know, hot um, players right now who we want to see come through, who would you, who would our offensive and pitching MVP was Jordan and Abreu. I feel like Jordan came through for me. I think Abreu sure. did too. He yeah. was close to hitting his first home run. Yeah, Warning track dead close. center. He was so close. It happens, but I mean, he did have a good series too. And like I said, three through five was good. Jordan was probably the best out of, out of Abreu. Yeah, it's kind of hard to beat a hundred career home runs. You know, that's an automatically MVP right there. I mean, then, he, I mean, Abreu is an MVP period already. So <laughs> let's not even go there. <laughs> <laughs> um, your pitching MVP came clutch with Christian Javier. Of course. I had Presley. He did come into the game yesterday, but it wasn't a it was not a safe situation. You know, I thought we were gonna steamroll the Tigers. So I was like, Presley's come in for some saves, but didn't work out. <laughs> but he came in to get some work in. And then I had Chaz will stay hot and so he started to take over the center field position. I think I think we've seen that today with that. I mean yesterday with that two run shot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he and again those stolen bases have been there. You had Bregman will hit out the slump and hit over four hundred. You caught that we we caught that as well. I don't know if you saw a fact. He, uh, in his rookie year, he was 0 for 18 and then got his first hit against the Tigers. Flash forward, it happened again. 0 for 18 yeah. and got his first hit of the season against the Tigers. And again, he, I mean, he's been hitting the ball. He's just now they're finding those gaps. And I feel like a good, like, I feel like a big season for Bregman's coming up. So, who are your new offensive pitching MVPs and what's your hot take for this series? So, my. Offensive MVP is going to go Jeremy Pena. I think okay. he found the groove of things that last two um, at bats he had got a double off the wall, and then he hit that home run in the Crawford boxes, which that was the only home run in out of all 30 major league ballparks that would have happened. If you look at Woody Dong on Twitter, it is a unicorn, and that was the only stadium that would have held that ball. You know, for him to go all the four bases. So not even Yankee Stadium. In that not even field? not even Yankee Stadium. So I think it's going to carry on to uh, Minnesota, hopefully. You know, <laughs> he's going to see Carlos Correa there, which Carlos Correa was a big mentor to him when he was back over here in the H. But I think Pena gets out of the his little slump. He kind of did already. He went them two hits. I think that continues on to the Twin Cities. Tell me your offensive as well. Tell me. I'll say Bregman. Again, I feel like he finds his groove. He's always had it. It's, again, Robert made some good plays on his hits in the gap. And – you know, he's just been hitting just a tough luck. And I feel like once you get that first hit, that boost of confidence just comes up. And I think he's going to make a twin kid in for sure. Yeah, I think so too. Um, I mean, I had him hit over 400 in the series. That didn't happen. He just hit 300. 
So I guess that's half that's a point. Close. That's pretty half close. a point. I would I would count as half. It was basically my my last take with Pena. He had over four hits, but he just went over the four strikeout uh, threshold that I had set. So another half point in my hot take. It don't count. <laughs> it does. But my next one, pitching MVP, it's going to be Jose Urquidy. We I are like going to see Jose Urquidy dominate. He found that new pitch, he said, with the sweeper. It was unknown on Baseball Savant and everywhere else. Now we know what it is. And, it, I mean, he threw that pitch a lot. It was his fastball and, his, and that sweeper that he was throwing a lot, mixing it up. As well, he looked very comfortable throwing that pitch too. If you remember seeing that live, I mean, I mean, it was getting the guys and swing and misses. I think it's going to help him too against the Twins. However, there is you got a lot of righties in that lineup. You got Carlos Correa, you got Jose Miranda, you got um, Byron Buxton as well. So I, it could be a good beneficial for him, but he's going to see some lefties and Max Kepler. You're going to see Joey Gallo as well, which he has been hot. Yeah, yeah, he has been good. hot lately. We're hitting a lot of home runs. Uh, shout out to the shift out there that's not, you know, being on the field anymore. But you have him. You have Nick Gordon. I believe my other player that I just picked up from Trevor Larnock. He's a lefty as well. So it could be a beneficial at the same time, too. A lefties could just take that sweeper to the right field side. So, but I think our kid is going to get it done this coming Start, give me yours. I got Garcia. I feel like those sweet, sweet braids of his are just gonna uh, come in clutch for us and and for our pitching. I, I feel like he goes seven innings, saves that bullpen a little bit, and we just see vintage Garcia for sure. Um, my hot take is Jeremy Pena gets on base more often than he normally does, and he steals at least three bases. I feel like we test. Wow, three, yeah, three. You're gonna you're gonna test Christian Vasquez. I'm gonna test Christian Vasquez three. Did you not see him whenever he had catched in the World Series and the playoffs? Three. I think he threw, think he threw all the batters out. I'm sticking to it. Three. I mean, I like it. Hopefully Pena does get on because that is my offensive MVP. <laughs> but hopefully he doesn't get thrown out as well because that's the last thing we need is for him to get thrown out. Oh, but what did you see Jazz get hurt on that slide? It was a stinger. A stinger, they called it. Oh, and it looked ugly though, too, because I mean his shoulder was back where the second baseman's leg yeah. was. Yeah, it looked nasty. Uh thank God it wasn't like a shoulder separation injury, like a yeah. dislocation. Because that would just – I mean, I have him on another fantasy team too, and that's the last person I need to get. Yeah. Sorry, I, I went off topic, but just, just remember. Nah, it's cool. But my hot take, it's going to be Jose Abreu. I love Jose Abreu. <laughs> no, no, you know, no stands on Yuli, but I, I love him. He, he's one of the best hitters too. He's going to stay hot. Like I said, he has a seven-game hitting streak right now. He got to – you know, he's hit safely in all his – all the games that we've played, he's batting over 350 in a batting average as well, too. I think he continues that on. He's going to s- extend his hitting streak to 10 games. So it's going to be a 10-game hitting like streak. It. And then plus, he, I mean, playing the AL Central, which, I mean, we've already played back-to-back-to-back series in the AL Central. You had the oh, White yeah. Sox, you had the Twins, and now we have, not the Twins, the Tigers, and now we have the Twins. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Just I, I'm just thinking that, about that right now. So, yeah, we're getting those out the way for sure. Yeah, but Jose Abreu, um, he has the most knowledge of that team over there, and I think he'll just continue to stay hot with that bat of his. I like to throw in a few RBIs because, you know, if we're saying Payne doesn't get on, who's going to bring him in? Jose Abreu? So yeah, I'll say, I, I say throw in some RBIs. I, I guess we could forget Jordan, I guess. Then. <laughs> and basically, you just say, hey, Jordan, you know. No, I mean, you're not getting no RBIs today, which not, he is tied. He is tied, I believe, in major league, in the major league in I believe uh, RBIs. It. I believe it. Moving on to around the league, there's only one undefeated team left. The Rangers were up there a while, but I'm glad they're not there no more. Shout so, out to Baltimore. Exactly. Hey, Baltimore has a pretty good squad, though, not going to lie. Um, Bryce not, Rodriguez look good. Gunnar Henderson, on the other hand, are really kicking my butt in my fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> but the Tampa Bay Rays are the last undefeated team. They are 6-0. and And their starting pitching has been amazing. Has been amazing. It's underrated. About, underrated. It, they're, it's about under uh, under 40 ERA, which is unheard of. Like 0.40, right? 
Zero point forty. Yeah. Now I want our listeners thinking a forty point yeah. oh, and that, that's no, a no, big no. difference 0. for an undefeated team. Unheard of. Like that's lights out. That's like Sandy Alcantara two days ago. Lights out. Like when he threw that mm-hmm. complete game shutout. Like yeah, it's crazy. And then we we had just mentioned Grayson Rodriguez. He received a call up today, and he did pretty good. He made his ma- major league debut Tuesday night. He is their first round pick. I'm sorry, he, he was their first round pick in eight, 2018 and their number seven prospect. I think he went five strong on that one. He did allow, I think, a run or two, but he has pretty good movement. I like it. Yeah, and like Hunter Brown. Hunter Brown didn't allow nobody in his first <laughs> MLB game, and that was against the Rangers, too. But, you know, real quick with the Rays pitching staff, dude, I already said it. I, I said it. They're going to be the number one wild card team. That, that's who I picked, at least, I believe. Wild card. Yeah, okay. I don't. I don't think they. I still think the Yankees. You know, even though yeah, it's because the thing with the Yankees, I feel like the Yankees and Dodgers started with like the two, like the easiest team. Like, you see the Dodgers schedule. They they started with Arizona, Colorado, and then Arizona again. Don't sleep on Arizona. No, no, no. no. I'm not. You saying can't sleep that. on them. I'm not saying that, but you I mean, can't sleep on them. I mean, they be D backs. There's a difference between going against, like, for example. You go against the Padres and then the Mets and the pot like then the Padres again. Like that's th- those are headaches of a team. I'm not like I, I'm okay. I don't want to discredit Arizona. You know they're still a major league club, but I I I feel the Dodgers chances against those teams compared to. Yeah, I I still think the Yankees are gonna gonna you know run with that division. But I mean the Rays pitching staff it's it's phenomenal. Shane McClanahan. Drew Rasmussen, Jerry Springs. He had a no hitter, I believe. Oh yeah, yeah. He, you know, he was six, day, innings, six innings. And yeah, he threw, strikeouts. Yeah, there's six innings, but his, you know, they had to cut his day short because of his pitch count. But that team, if the hitting is there, that's the only thing that's been with the Rays. It's the hitting. They're the that opposite is, of the Angels. Yeah, that is it. Because if that, if the Rays have a hitting, if they have the hitting team. If you know if they could get playoff Randy from 2020, this yeah, that team could too. be yeah that team could be dangerous. The same thing as Wander Franco, Jose Siri. You know, shout out to him too. He's been doing good over there with the Rays. But this is the first time in franchise history they've ever been undefeated in their first. I think even three zero. That that was their first time in franchise his, uh, history being undefeated. Just man, wanted to throw that out there. Man, can I change the uh, my pick? The Blue Jays making me look silly right now. I had the Blue Jays winning the division. <laughs> I think I have them as my second wild card, I believe. So, and then yeah. we talked about the pitch clock last podcast, and now we're seeing some pitch clock blunders where the hitters aren't just completely adjusted yet. Manny Machado and Tim Anderson were both ejected for arguing about the pitch clock. I think they both struck out. They're both weren't too happy about it, and they're both <laughs> ejected from the game. Like, I feel again. We talked about this. I feel like this is the only down, downsize of, of, like, downfall of the pitch clock. Mm-hmm. I don't like it. Like, it's just like, I, oh, I'm I'm anti pitch clock. I feel like I like spending time at the ball game, but I can see why the players like it. Like, they get to spend more time with their families. Like, I feel like it's more like they're in, they're out. Like that Sandy on Cantara game was an hour and fifty seven minutes. Like, that's the new record of the game. Yeah. The last one was the Guardians and uh, the Mariners. What two hours and three minutes? Now you got an hour and fifty six minutes. That's, that's like two beers in, or well, unless you're just like buying <laughs> double like, fisting already. Yeah, like it's crazy. But I mean, they weren't too happy about it. They both got ejected. But but you see why though, right? Because they put their hand up and they called for time. Yeah, I forgot and to mention that. You're right. Ron Copa didn't give Machado time, and I don't know who was the umpire on the other side for the White Sox, and they didn't give Anderson time. You see, I, it, it takes me back to that game. If you remember um, from the college baseball, it was Tennessee, oh, and yeah, this yeah. kid was saying he was like, yelling. He had, yeah, he had his hand out for time. He said time like six times. The umpire still didn't give it to him. Luckily, he drew a walk. Because if he didn't draw a walk and struke out, that would have been oh, that would have been suspension, right I, ejection, and I think a suspension too. Because he would have bumped into the blue for not giving him time. See, but... And then the blues don't have to give you time; it's a courtesy. But come on now, like when I feel like when you still have eight seconds left, the pitcher's not ready, like or the pitcher's not going to throw. Like there's nothing wrong with it, or there's like I don't see the purpose of not to give it to you know to the hitter. Like, and I think too, Machado had one foot out of the box, which you know when when. You have one foot in and one foot out. That means you, as the batter, you know, um, you still have time to you know, 
get your two feet in because the blue will allow you to either not get in or get in. And he had one foot in, one foot out. He was fixing his bad gloves. The blue, too. I mean, you got to open your eyes at the same time to see the better because you're looking at the pitcher, but at the same time, too, you got to look at the better. If or they can see both. I'm sure they can see both. So you're telling, okay, then why did Ron Copa do not see Manny Machado? I don't know. Okay, you said they see both. I'm sure they do. Maybe he didn't want to give him time. Oh, uh, it was the Ron Copa show. He gave uh who were they facing? It was the Padres and D backs. The D backs uh bad boy was gonna go get um won the bats, I believe, from either the batter or I don't. It was either um one of them sliding gloves or it was the actual bat. And the bad boy was still going, you know, Copa just said, Hey, hold up, time. We got we gotta get time. We got the D backs bad boy still coming. It's like, come on, you you gave him time, but what about Manny Machado? <laughs> I mean, this is baseball here. Let's go. And then again, with this time violation going on, we have history. We have someone in the history books. Shohei Otani became the first pitcher ever, a first player ever, player. to have a timer violation as a batter and a pitcher in the same game. So, give him a round of applause. He's in the history books. But, I mean, he's already in history books. Oh, already. yeah. He's a Hall of Famer <laughs> coming up for sure. Like if, like, if he stays healthy, he's a first ballot Hall of Famer, definitely. Yeah, um, I mean, speaking of the Angels, they are in first place in the AOS. Wow. In first place. But, I mean, if anything happened last year, weren't they in first place last year and they just complete, completely fell off the planet Earth? And I would just... Yeah, just, just ask Joe Madden because yeah. he said they could compete with the Astros anytime. And then <laughs> they did not compete with the Astros. <laughs> so, Angels are in first. Rangers are in second. Astros stayed at third after two series. Athletics fourth, which is surprising there. And Mariners fifth. That's surprising there. Mariners. Mariners fifth. in fifth. I mean, that's a slow start. That's an even worse start, I mean, I feel like. But, I mean, we're in third place. It's like a game or two, so it's not too I think. Bad. I think the only games they've won was because of Luis Castillo. That's the only thing, oh, wow. I believe. Robbie Ray hasn't been good for them. George Kirby, sadly, I had him on my fantasy. He got ranked up. I feel like uh, Jordan broke Robbie Ray. Robbie Ray was way broke before yeah. that. And when he signed with the Mariners, he should have not left I like Toronto. To believe, I, I like to believe it was Jordan. He, he should have stayed. He should have stayed in Toronto, but he, he left and decided to get the bag. After he, I think he did win the Cy Young in Toronto. Actually, I, I can't remember the top of my head. He did have a good season there out there, but that that will change. That will change. We will see the Rangers, the first AOS opponent, after the Pirate series next week. So and it should be exciting. Friday night fireworks. Friday night they're giving away the twenty five consecutive quality starts of Framber Valdez. Bobblehead. I actually like that one. Yeah, and That's then nice. Saturday, Saturday they're giving away Framer Valdez uh, navy blue alternate jerseys. Of course, his and favorite. Then, yeah, and then Sunday, I'm not too 100 percent sure, but uh, I'm pretty sure there'll probably be another giveaway during that time. But Andrew, you have anything else to say? No, just you know, have a good um, Thursday. You know, drink. It's safe. Friday, Junior. It's Friday, Junior. So you already know people are going to be ready. They're happy for the weekend coming up. But... I'm ready. I I don't work Monday nor nor Friday. Like I'm ready for that too. Okay, I, the weekend. I know Good Friday. A lot of people are going to be off Monday. Yeah. What what what's for Monday? It's Easter. Good Monday. Let's call it. <laughs> Good Monday. You're <laughs> come on now, dude. <laughs> but that is all for our show, ladies and gents. Continue to follow us at Full Seam Ahead on Twitter as and TikTok as well. I haven't put on, I haven't uh, updated our TikTok on there, on our on our graphic right there on YouTube. I gotta get that going. You know, sorry about that, but Full Seam Ahead on TikTok as well. We'll continue to have some interviews uh, with some players. Uh, you saw that Modern Auto one that we did. We were able to catch that live whenever he was dancing. It he got the moves. That, yeah, that, he definitely. got the moves. So it, it was nice to see Modern Auto. Um, getting loose out there seeing the guys get prepared and getting ready so if you want all that live action that you just saw from that one little tiktok follow us we're going to be having a lot of that on there especially on twitter um soon we will be posting our instagram but tiktok and twitter at full seam ahead uh subscribe to our podcast channels on apple spotify and google podcasts but like I said, that is all for today's show. It is Friday, Junior. Get re- ready for the weekend. Uh, majority, I'm pretty sure, are going to be off Good Friday. So get ready. 
Astros baseball is going to be taking off over there in the Twin Cities. We got your preview. We are here. We are your best source for Astros content and not just Astros. We'll give you some baseball content as well around the league. So, like I said, thank you. Signing off. We will talk to you all guys later after the Twin Series. Peace. See you guys.